united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, United with Christ. This uh, month we've been talking about the Immigration Alliance, a new national initiative that has been uh, organized by World Relief and has brought 15 denominations and more since October the 21st. I'd like to open uh, with prayer. This is going to be a very interesting day. Uh, today is the 20th of November and uh, you may know that President Obama has decided to uh, discuss tonight an executive order that he's going to put in uh, in play on immigration. So let's begin with, uh, with uh, some prayer. Let's go to God. So Lord, we just thank you uh, so much uh, for everything that you have provided us, for sending us your son, for being our friend, for being our brother. And Lord, we just ask you as we enter this new period of time uh, that we are able to reflect Jesus Christ as you would have us do to the immigrant amongst us who is our brother who you ask us to care for so many times and Lord we just give you all of the thanks and glory for everything that you provide us on a daily basis and all of the wonderful things. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, uh, I just want to remind you uh, what we uh, have uh, gone over over the last couple of weeks uh, here on United with Christ. I want to thank uh, KSCE TV for allowing us this opportunity. You may recall that uh, immigration is one of those issues that has been discussed forever. Well, actually, immigration is an issue that is discussed many times in the Old Testament. I think that um, many scholars talk about the word, and I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I'm going to try grer, G-E-R, which is uh, the, uh, uh, the reference in the Old Testament to uh, the Hebrew scriptures, which means alien uh, or stranger amongst us, which modern translation would be an immigrant. And in Leviticus, uh, we're talked about uh, Jesus gives us, uh, not Jesus, excuse me, the Lord gives us direction in Leviticus 19, verses 33 to 34. And he says, when an alien or an immigrant lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The alien living with you must be treated as one of your native born. Love him as yourself, for you were aliens in Egypt, and I am your God. So isn't that interesting, referring to all of us as aliens or, or immigrants of one kind or another, and, and as we all know, the United States uh, is a nation of immigrants. Um, I'd like to call for a video and, and have you watch a video that is very, very apropos for what we're doing at the Immigration Alliance, as well as a number of other faith-based initiatives. So we'll see that video and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about immigration. As an American Christian, is it your job, your duty? Are you called keep people who are different than you out of the United States? Or are you called to get them into the kingdom of God? Leviticus 19 is one place that God commands the Israelites over and over again. You were foreigners, you were slaves in Egypt, therefore welcome the stranger among you, welcome the alien in your midst. So we as Christians, if we believe the Bible, if we take God at what he says, if we want to obey his commands, then we need to welcome the stranger. Our immigration laws have not kept up with reality and changes in our society. This is an urgent matter. There are people here who live in fear every day who are just regular working people 
who every time they get in the car, they have to look in their rear view because they're afraid if a policeman pulls them over, they could be deported. They say, Mommy, can we go to the library? I said, okay, let's go. But I don't know if I go to the back. It is a constant fear of not knowing if she's all right while she's driving. Carolina, the little one, she says, Mom, I have bad dreams and people take me somewhere else. I say, why? Because you are not here anymore with us. It's being said that these illegal immigrants take jobs from Americans. For every person that we have holding those just back-breaking, hard, repetitive jobs, there are two and a half to three jobs upstream and downstream, be it suppliers, be it retailers, that will not have a job if we cannot find that labor to do the actual hard work. I am willing to do anything because I love my kids and I want the best for them. I am trying to do my best. I pay my taxes. She, of all people, is aware of what she's done and how she's broken U.S. law. And she, of all people, would want to remedy that if there was a way, if there was a path, but there's not right now. Your vegetables will be picked by foreign hands, either inside our border or outside of our border. People are tired of waiting. The time is now. My friends who have no other options, their life is going on. I was asking God, please help me because this is for my kids. This is not only for me, it's for my kids. We know people who came to this country undocumented. They became Christians here. Would you say to them, I wish you hadn't come here and weren't a Christian? Please help us to do everything right. And if there is something that we need to do, I mean, I am willing to do anything. It's not an option to wait because the situation is only getting worse. Brothers and sisters, uh, what an opportunity we have as Christians amongst us uh, to welcome the stranger, to be that Jesus Christ image, that shining amount of love that Jesus is to us, and to welcome the, the, the alien, if you will, the stranger, the sojourner amongst us. Um, I, I'd like to continue with a little bit of uh, the biblical discussion on immigration. And it starts in Genesis, actually. Abram, who as you recall, brothers and sisters, was later called Abraham, is introduced in Genesis 11 as an immigrant from Ur to Haran. Abram's journey did not stop there. This Ur-born immigrant later journeyed to Canaan with a stay in Egypt as well. Abram's decision to leave Haran and bring his family to Canaan parallels the stories of many historical and contemporary immigrants who leave the lands they know and cross borders in pursuit of a promise. In this case, a divine promise that God would bless him and make him a great nation. So then as we continue on in looking at the biblical discussion of uh, Im immigrants or aliens or the sojourner, as we look again in Exodus uh, 3, 8, God ultimately used Moses to bring his people out of Egypt as they would, could live in a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And those were sojourners under Moses' leadership. And the book of Exodus explains how God used uh, this unconfident man to leave the tyrannical government. Uh, and then we look at, at Samuel and where we have the discussion of Ruth's great-grandson, David, who was born as a descendant of an immigrant. Hmm, isn't that interesting? Aren't we all descendants of immigrants? In God's perfect plan, 
That did not stop him from becoming Israel's greatest king. Likewise, many of the great heroes of American history have been immigrants. David also crossed borders himself, fleeing the wrath of King Saul and seeking asylum from King Ashish of Gath in the territory of the Philistine. David established him there in Gath along with his family. So we have uh, set the stage in the Old Testament for the stranger, the alien, the sojourner, uh, the immigrant. And, and doesn't Jesus tell us that we are to love one another as ourselves? He doesn't say check and see whether or not this is a citizen. Uh, he says love your brother who is the person next to you as yourself. Love your sister who is the person next to you as yourself. So as we've discussed this month, uh, I'm representing the Anglican Church in North America on what's known as the Immigration Alliance. And the Immigration Alliance is focusing on direct services. And, and it's not, direct, and it's not uh, discussing advocacy. It is the tool by which these 15 denominations and others, we hope, will be able to provide legal services at a low cost in one of my favorite passages is Matthew 5, 41. And it is, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. And so give to the one who asks you and do not turn away the one who wants to borrow from you. And so that brings in the discussion of the extra mile attitude. I believe the Immigration Alliance and the denominations that are represented, and, and others throughout the country, the National uh, Immigration Table, the National Association of Latinos, all of these organizations are coming together to discuss the immigration problem. But the extra mile attitude is someone who cares more than others think is wise, risks more than others think is safe, dreams more than others think is practical, and believes more than others think is possible and gives more than others think is necessary. So, uh, brothers and sisters, when we come back, we're going to break uh, for a musical interlude. When we come back, we're going to discuss immigration and what's going to happen uh, today as it's predicted and what our response as Christians should be. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you after the musical break. Thank you so much. Well, brothers and sisters, thanks again. Uh, I am Gus Haddad, representing the Immigration Alliance, discussing with you this month on, uh, on United with Christ. Uh, a, very, a very urgent need, but most importantly, an opportunity for we as Christians to expand and to continue to deliver on God's great commandment, and that is to spread His word, to spread His love, to all of the corners of the earth. You know, we are all immigrants here. Uh, I uh, discussed with you how our family came. I discussed with you in, this, in, the, in, in one of our segments the infrastructure and what we're trying to do. Our approach is missional. The Immigration Alliance is missional. It is the opportunity for the church to welcome the stranger as we, as we saw earlier the stranger can be called an alien. And, and we talked about the, the strangers in, in our lands, the stranger Abraham, the stranger David in the, in the New Testament, in the Old Testament, pardon me. So the critical need is A, that there's some uh, statistic, and I'm not sure if I could tell you whether that statistic is correct or not. I don't know where it comes from, except I think it comes from the Bureau of Immigration. And that is that there's some 22 million people who are foreign born immigrants living amongst us who do not have a path to citizenship or to legal status in the United States. And so they're living in the shadows and they're living in, in some fear of, of immigration or la migra as we call it in the southwestern part of the United States. And so there's only 12,000 private immigration attorneys and some 2,800 immigration services. And so what an opportunity for the Christian church to be able to look 
upon that person and say, brother, sister, how can I help you? Let me point you to one of these areas. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the purpose of us discussing this is so that we could provide within our church-based ministries. Uh, the Alliance is discussing the fact that we've got about 30 centers open right now throughout the United States, and we're looking at perhaps opening many more. We hope to have about as many as 1,000 uh, centers by 2017 and serve as many as a million immigrants in helping them on a legal path uh, so that that person who is underserved uh, but underfunded, most importantly, would be able to see that their Christian brother or sister is helping them and to reach out. So I want to ask you a question, and then I want to show, I want to show you a short little uh, uh, program on whether or not you're prepared as a Christian to help become that welcoming person. As a result of our first show, I met Pastor Luis Alba for the second time. Admittedly, I've met Luis before, but I did not know Luis. Pastor Luis was a member of the National Association of Evangelicals, and they are one of our, fa uh, of one of our uh, founding members of the Anglican Alliance, uh, the Immigration Alliance. And he would like to set up a program on the east side and perhaps another one uh, in El Paso, Texas. And isn't that an opportunity for us? So I want to ask you if you're prepared, and I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to look at this quick tutorial on welcoming the stranger. So that is really the question, isn't it? Are we ready, is the American church ready to welcome and help and be Jesus? Are we ready to act out what we say we believe? What a mission field. This is not a justice or a political issue. This is about a mission field. You know, so many people in the path to citizenship or the path to legality have to return to their country and have to spend some time in the immigration area of their country talking about the fact that they knew that they had violated the laws of not only their home country but also the country uh, that they wanted to go to, which in this case is the United States. Are we prepared to help? Are we prepared to be Christians? I know when I first was invited into this discussion uh, uh, some uh, year, year and a half ago, I know I, I, must, uh, I, I must have been very skeptical because I looked at this 
and I thought, uh, unfortunately, very judgmental about, well, you know, our, our family came here in a very, in a very uh, uh, legal way and we had to spend time in Juarez. My grandfather spoke 11 languages when he was in Europe and my other grandfather spoke five and they had to travel and they were aliens in the countries of Europe that were invited in and we spent time in Juarez probably four or five years before we could e uh, legally immigrate to the United States. And so that's a, that's a judgmental view of the alien that is here amongst us, the, the, uh, the immigrant. And then I was enlightened that God has open arms and Jesus has open arms and that the immigrant is our brother, our sister, and perhaps has made some mistakes. And isn't it the mission field of the Church of Jesus Christ to be able to help that person get back on the path to understanding that their children are just as important as the children of those of us in the United States. The problem is that many of us in the American church have the attitude that I had about a year, a year and a half ago that I just discussed. And it's a very informational, transitional, transformational time to be able to spend time with the Bible and with others who understand the legalities, the illegalities, and the path. But most importantly, isn't it really understanding that our mission field, our mission field is right here amongst us. God says that we are to treat our brother and our sister as ourselves. Jesus came for our salvation. He came so that we would be able to understand that that is our mission field. So ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you for joining us, allowing us to come into your living rooms today and spending some time uh, with understanding. And so be prepared, be prepared to volunteer. If you'd like to call me uh, here at the station, I know that I'll get word from them. That's how Pastor Alba got a hold of me. And so call me here at KSCE and we'll be happy to discuss how you could be involved in welcoming the stranger and the work of the Immigration Alliance in the United States. Thank you again, God bless you, and I wish you wonderful, wonderful futures. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSCE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.